is Unleashing Leadership, and I'm your host, Travis Moss, and we are with Dave Nurchi, our Season 5 co-host, and we're getting after the lessons learned from the book, The Hard Thing About Hard Things by Ben Horowitz, and today we are going to talk about how, as a leader, you are never too busy to train people, and this is brought to you by Seed Planning Group, Fee-Only Fiduciaries, a wealth management firm that helps people overcome the challenges that are keeping them from personal fulfillment. Check it out at seedpg.com. You're going to find less pinstripes, less fancy words, and a lot more results. All right, Dave. Never too busy to train. This is, I work with small business owners a lot. And um, we have managers on our team a lot and stuff. Well, not a lot, all the time, obviously. Um, And... uh, you know, when you're a small company, you don't really think about these things, but as you start to get bigger and you start to specialize and, and the best people aren't always working with the newest people anymore because people are, you know, in different roles and stuff like that, training becomes more and more important. But I think the big question then is, is whose job is it to train people? Yeah, I, I think it, it's absolutely the, the leaders and managers jobs to train, right? You, it needs to come from the top and it needs to be aligned throughout the organization. Uh, so you're using the same words, the same concepts. We talk about manager training and having what we're calling a, a seed, the manager's creed, right? That's a, that's conceptual and that digs in right to what you should be doing as a manager at seed. Um, so it absolutely has to come from leadership and if you're too busy to train, then what are you doing with your time, right? If you're not training your people, we last episode, we just talked about people are your most important asset, right? So if you're not training your people, how are you using your time? Yeah. I, while you were saying, I was thinking, you know, everybody, everybody always talks about uh, when, when one of the top things when they, I guess, go in and survey young people, what their young people want to be when they grow up, they're like, I want to be an influencer. And you ask, what do you want to influence? I don't care. I just want to be an influencer, right? Because I want everybody looking at me and I want to get paid for just talking or whatever. What do you think a leader is? A leader is an influencer, Influencer. right? Right. And what does an influencer actually do? An influencer teaches people or trains people. It programs people how to think a certain way, right? Yep. So the best leaders out there, if you go to whatever organization you want to go to, probably the best leaders out there are going to be the ones um, who are actually very good at training or teaching. And you might say, well, you know, they weren't, you know, they didn't teach the technical skills or they didn't teach this or that or the other thing. They taught what the people who are following them believe in. That's what they're teaching. They're they're saying, look, this is the way that we do this. This is how we do this. This is the grit that we have. This is this is the culture that we're going to have. They are from day one the 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 trainers and the teachers and the influencers within the organization. Yep. And the more effective they are, the more dynamic and healthy and flourishing that organization probably is. And it's not just like, okay, every day I, you know, walk around and I tell four or five people, hello, it's actually a conscious effort to put together true training and deliver it. Like if I say, Hey, um, we're going to be sharp on project execution and I want all my managers to execute projects a certain way. It's up to me to make sure they understand clearly what I'm talking about, not say, you guys go be you guys go be sharp on execution. See you later. Let me know what the results are. It's these are my expectations. Let me teach you the expectations. Now, within that, you might become actually better than I am, but as long as you're meeting the expectations, right? So it's not necessarily about so much the 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 the, the nuanced skill, but so much about more of the um setting the broader standards, like the architecture of it, right? Like if mm-hmm. I was going to design the pyramids, I'm going to say, this is how big the foundation is going to be. And these are the angles to it. And this is how the exterior is going to look. But within it, you know, we're going to have all these rooms. Everybody can have their own room, however they want it to look, yep. you know, and there's going to be all these different size blocks and stuff like that. So you've got teachers, influencer, trainer. That's number one job at the top. 
but actively training and developing it. And, you know, feel free to talk about how we do that. But, and then you've got, you know, leadership development for that middle level manager. And then you've got subject matter training Mm -hmm. for the people, you know, like, look, I'm a, a a paperwork specialist. Okay. You got to learn how to do the paperwork and that kind of thing. So kind of like, there's no job within the organization. I think where training goes away, it just, it might be slightly different. Um, at each different level that you go up, but it kind of sets the tone from the top. Right. The top guys still got to show up to meetings and lead training. Yeah. Like the, the concept of the training may change, right. As you, as you grow, but the, the chain never goes away. No, I, I love that. As you were saying that I'm thinking what's, what, what's the difference there? Um, so there's so many resources now, right. That you can go train technical skills <clears throat> or, you could go on, there's LinkedIn learning. There's, there's all these different, I don't even know half of them that are online that you can just find Excel trainings, whatever it is, any type of technical thing that's important. But the part where you talk about what is like, what is leadership's role? It's that constant reminder of what are the, what are the behaviors that we want happening at the company that instill our values and all of that. Um, that, that's where it becomes so important, right? Because that's what's going to trickle through the whole company. So like the, the top people have to show up. They have to be part of it. Right. They have to be doing it and teaching it. So I, I think that's, that's really how I look at that is uh, I, I agree with you completely that um, the busyness part is one thing, but it's the, the showing up and executing it and not just, you know, pointing fingers and saying, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that. It's, here's how we're going to do it now, now run with that and let it trickle through the company. Yeah. We've seen it go the other way where, look, you're in charge of training your people, you train your people. Right. And then you get kind of weird, kind of bizarre, you know, product, let's Mm -hmm. say training product that happens, you know, and, and then you look as a leader and you're like, what the heck is going on? Then you figure out, well, I didn't properly define what training means. And I didn't properly define the non-negotiables within the work product that we're looking for. And that's where I think like we, we actually are rolling out a manager's creed and the, the first part, it's a five part creed. And the first part is about accountability and responsibility. Mm -hmm. So it is our job as the leaders at the top to teach the other leaders and managers within the organization, accountability and responsibility. It is our job to help them understand what is good, what is bad, what happens if it's not good, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yep. It's their job to then take those skills and incorporate that into the more skill-based training, you know, that are more job specific to their staff. But if you miss that first part, they can teach their staff, okay, you know, we're going to do, I always use paperwork as an example, just because it's easy. We're going to do paperwork. And then there's errors on the paperwork and nobody cares. Well, nobody cares because you didn't teach accountability. Nobody cares because you didn't teach about responsibility. Right. And then somebody will say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take accountability for that. It's like, really? You, will you? Do you really understand what taking accountability for one of your people who's not being accountable means? It means that instead of them getting fired, you get fired. Right. You know, and so you can't be mad at somebody who doesn't even understand what it means to be accountable because leadership hasn't trained accountability at the very top level. And that's where, like, you can't just say it. And a lot of people think training is, Dave, you and I are going to go in a room. And I'm going to go through a quick little, you know, 30 minute PowerPoint or bullet pointed Word doc. And I'm going to tell you all about what I think about responsibility. And I call that training Mm -hmm. or I call that teaching or whatever. That's not it. Training is about, I mean, think about if you're an athlete, how many times do you drill? Like I love uh, scholastic college and Olympic wrestling. How many times do you think those, those kids drill double leg blast takedowns, right? Mm -hmm. Or their stand-ups or, you know, whatever, you know, you were, you were a football player, you were a baseball player too, right? Yep. Yeah. So how many times you work on your swing yeah. Every practice. or your route running or anything like that, right? Like yep. you have to drill over and over and over again. Why wouldn't that be any different just because, oh, you're, you're at the executive level. I'm at the, I guess we don't have to train anymore. Even, even the top guy, the CEO, even my job mm-hmm. is to continue to train. Now you, I can learn from within. I can watch what my people are doing. I can always learn. But the skills that I need to learn probably are outside the organization. 
Right. I need to put myself in an environment where I can constantly get more skills to learn so that I can bring it back to you guys and say, Hey, remember what we were doing with responsibility and accountability? This is how we take that up a notch. Yep. You know, here's techniques to use to, to trickle down through the organization. Yeah. Yeah. If the top people stop learning, then why would, why would people in the rest of the organization keep thinking yeah. that learning is what they should be doing? Right. So yeah, if the top people are hungry to, to learn more and learn new skills and bring that in the organization, then that's going to, that's going to be the, the culture environment that you create.